Omnichannel routing in Zendesk for 2025. Complete guide, setup and best practices. Let's go. Now, if you can see my screen, I'm going to go to admin center and activate the agent workspace. So let me just go to workspaces, agent workspace turn this up okay now I'm going to refresh the screen and I'm going to go and turn on messaging so I'm going to go to channels if you don't refresh you're not going to see messaging here go to messaging and then go to messaging settings and then turn on messaging for your accounts and then I'm going to add some brands here where I want this to work and let me just choose a few that's it save this up okay so these were the prerequisites or what you have to have in order to have omnichannel work omnichannel is a way for you to democratically assign work to people based on workload based on capacity based on skills and based on priority now i'm going to go to objects and rules and i'm going to scroll down to routing configuration so first thing first i'm going to go to set up omnichannel routing and i'm going to turn on omnichannel routing and i have two options in here i have a queue based routing and I have group based routing. Neither one of these is wrong, so they're both effective. And this one, the queue based routing, is the newest one, which means that you have queues. By default, in omnichannel routing in Zendesk, you have a default queue. So tickets come in and they get assigned to this main queue. And from there on, it takes over with the skills, with the priority, with the capacity, etc. I'm not going to have this example in this video, but I'm going to use group based routing. So omnichannel routing works out of the box with message with talk and then additionally you can add asynchronous channels like email API forms and that's it by the way my name is Dominic I'm a Zendus premier partner I've been a Zendus consultant for 11 years I'm close to getting into my 12th year so now what we have to do in the group based routing which I am going to go for I am going to first add a tag which is omnichannel routing tag and I'm going to leave it at that and I'm going to save this up now first thing that I have to do is to create a tag and this tag gets applied to my asynchronous channels like email form and API so it's this tag here omnichannel routing you can choose a different tag if you want but this is the one that I want to use and I have to set up a trigger that assigns this tag to these asynchronous channels again email API and forms I'm going to do that a little bit later during the video you can find timestamps to navigate directly there if you want to save this up now let's go here and edit the routing configuration and let's walk through what all of these options mean now first I have my sorting so first things is uh, prioritize tickets with the service level agreement. The service level agreement is a commitment to your customer that you will get back to them within X amount of time or you will solve the ticket within X amount of time. So if I turn this on, the tickets that are closest to breach the SLA, so meaning they're closest to you breaking your promise to getting back to your customer within some time or resolving the ticket within some time, these will get priority and be assigned first. Round Robin identifies agents with spare capacity and then it assigns work depending on which channel the agent has not received work in the longest. By the way, if you enjoy the content, I be really grateful if you subscribe to this YouTube channel and you let me know what you think in the comments and I will get back to you. I'd be really grateful and thank you so much. Or you can choose the highest spare capacity. Now this one goes together with skill-based routing and skill-based routing means that you assign skills to your agents like language skills or functional skills like tech, like finance, like tier one, like tier zero, like tier two, etc. It is recommended that with this one, you use skills timeout and let's do that. So for email, the timeout is one hour. So if nobody's there to pick up for this skill, uh, this email for one hour, then it gets assigned to somebody else who does have capacity. For messaging, it's 30 seconds and for talk, 30 seconds by default. I prefer 20 seconds to be honest, just because I want people to get the attention that they want faster. I can turn on focus mode, which means that if an agent deals with phone, chat, and messaging conversations, I only assign work to these agents one at a time, like one channel at a time, which is something that I don't want and I don't recommend. Now I have turn on reassignment for reopen tickets and I like this option. If I don't turn this on, it means that if an agent goes home and the customer is not done yet with their request and they still write, the ticket goes back to open and it will remain with the same agent, which will cause frustration to the customer because they still want to engage with someone even if you know the agent finished their shift. So now following along with the configuration of this. So for email, I reassign tickets when an agent has the following status. So if the agent ha has the status offline, 
or end away, I want emails to be reassigned to somebody else, some other agent that can help this customer. I will do the same with messaging so that I'm assured that the conversation can continue with somebody else who is available in online status. I will not reassign tickets through queues because that's a sort of a different approach and it does not necessarily fit very well with this approach. Now, email routing automatically open assigned email tickets, which uh, will open in a new tab for the agent and they will be notified. Now this can work, but I don't consider agents as babies or as children. So I will let them decide when they want to pick up an email you know, it doesn't have to be now, it can be in two minutes, it can be in 15. And, uh, you know, I trust people being able to be governing their own way of working. Now, the same thing for messaging routing. So you can wait until an agent accepts or reassign if an agent doesn't accept within the time limit. You know, an agent can be very caught up with solving a request, so they won't be able to maybe very quickly get something. They want to maybe finish something first and then uh, take on new work. So I will reassign this after 20 seconds if an agent can pick it up so somebody who has capacity and is available can take this on i can also auto accept for an agent which is also good it works kind of like a live chat environment where you get assigned tickets but uh, to my point earlier i would like people to govern their own way of working and you know have autonomy on that but it is a good option nevertheless if you want to have more control over your team i personally don't recommend it but it can work wonders as well i also have this option of a uh, count inactive conversation towards an agent's capacity. If I have inactive conversations from the previous day, uh, then this can also count against my capacity as an agent and I will not be available to take on new work. I will not check this one because I can make sure that I let people know that they have written to us or to me during outside of business hours and they will get the attention that they need once the agent gets back to you know the backlog and works those tickets now i'm going to save this up all right next one is queues i'm going to skip this one for another video i'm going to go to capacity rules i'm just going to go to edit this capacity rule that i already have and i'm going to walk you through so these are the assignees that i have assigned this to and for email which is email web form api maybe side conversations and even sms or text um, i want agents to be able to deal with five at the same time for message I want only two and for talk obviously just one at a time so let me save this up now I advise that this capacity depends on your agents experience so somebody who's been with you for longer can handle more cases because they know how to do it and somebody who's just starting out potentially can have less because they're slower they're still learning so this is how you can think about using the capacity okay next one is agent statuses so by default in Zendesk you have these four so these are unit find agent statuses and this means that everything that you work in support for all of these channels that I mentioned for messaging, talk, email, API, web form and sometimes chat but the classic chat from Zopin is going away and it is being replaced by messaging. So keep that in mind. So this one doesn't really fit in here. So in this case, you have one status for all, which I like, which is great. It brings everything together. And of course, if an agent is online, then they're able to take and work. It means that their capacity is being tested and their skills and their pri and the ticket priority. So if an agent is online, good, very good. If they're away, it means they're not at the computer, so they will not be assigned work unless you play with the configuration which I have excluded myself. Transfers only, so this is available for uh, people who are potentially just handling some types of cases, which can be finance or, for example, somebody in management or compliance who only deals with, for example, discounts and trying to keep people from going away to the competition. And offline, well, everybody goes home to take a nap or it's the weekend uh, and that's that now the last option is idle timeout so this means that if after some time the agents will just go to idle which means they won't receive any more work because you know they're away from the computer they forgot to turn themselves uh, you know to offline when they left work or they're on a break or they had a fire in the house and they left very urgently so you know this takes care of that okay so now after i save it uh, how much idle time do i want this to give so i like this to the default 10 minutes it means that if they don't have any activity then then we put them into away after 10 minutes or we put them offline i'd rather we put them away and make sure we have the configuration to ignore the away so i'm going to save this up for 10 minutes not because i've given you what usually people come for with 
with the setup and the sharing of the screen and the demo, I'm going to talk about the theory. So omnichannel routing enables you to route calls, messages, emails, API tickets, web form tickets. You route this through a single engine. So gone are the days when you had to create triggers for every type of request coming into the system. Now you can very elegantly do this with omnichannel routing. You just turn it on and you let it do its thing. You obviously have to watch out and configure it and make sure you iterate and you know make it better every time. But this essentially takes away the worry of having to have a routing matrix and too much setup for your system. So this allows you to focus on the high level of you know the internal processes like who your team is, who your group departments are, what skills do your agents need and have. And then you just tie them into Zendesk with this feature where you can assign work to agents based on capacity, based on priority, and based on the skills that the agents have. Now, the last part of the video is to configure that trigger that I mentioned uh, earlier in the video. There's actually two triggers you have to set up. One is to assign tickets to a group. Like everything that I want to be filtered with omnichannel routing, I want these to be part of one single group. You see how simple this gets? All right, so in triggers, um, this is my trigger. I have already created it. So I've named this uh, assign new ticket to support group. No group is assigned. So very quickly, I choose a category and uh, assign triggers this is what they call it and then these conditions are pretty simple and straightforward uh, if a ticket is created and uh, the group is blank doesn't exist so it has no group yet then the ticket group is support us this is the group that i want omnichannel routing to be added to next trigger is to add the omnichannel routing tag to my email api and web form requests so i'm going to give this a very intuitive name like add omnichannel routing tag to a ticket being created via email api web form pretty straightforward right um i put this in set triggers you put it in wherever you want but it's nice to be tidy it pays a lot of dividends to be organized because who Whoever comes after you will need to easily understand what everything is about. Now, in the conditions, I go to all of these conditions. So ticket is created and then uh, the tag contains none of the tags. So it does not contain omnichannel routing. Now, what I want with this is if a ticket has already received this tag, I want it to be ignored. So I want to make sure that it, that it does not have this tag. All right. So any conditions means like it can belong to any of these conditions. So it must be created. It must not have this tag and then it can be either from email, it can be from web form, it can be a ticket from web service. And what I want to do is I want to add the tag omnichannel routing. Then you save it up and that's it. Whew, all right, you made it. I tried to make this as snappy as possible to make it, you know, very straightforward for you. What we noticed from working with our clients, people are still kind of afraid of this feature and I get it. It's, it seems pretty daunting. The information is a bit vague and it can cause a bit of anxiety because you don't really have too much control over over it. This is, if you will, as a friend described it as a black box and you don't really know what's in the black box. You know that it should do some stuff and you don't really see how it does it. So that's what's probably contributing to people's fears. If you are somebody who has been uh, afraid of turning this on, you know, it's not the end of the world. You can turn it on and then iterate as you go. If you're afraid to do that, you can get a consultant to help you fit this into your workload like us. This is what we do on a regular basis. But my best recommendation is to just go for it. Live a little <laughs> be present. And uh, that's it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. I know I forgot 50,000 things to say to this. And uh, this is what usually happens. I just try to make it as efficient as, uh, as uh, compact as possible. But anyway, I will come back and I'll make another one. Bye.